the book began two and a half years ago, and I organized it with Steve Best and Peter McLaren. The book uh, was framed out uh, in the beginning to be 12 articles, and we thought that 12 individuals could organize a, a book that discussed and uh, addressed all the topics in higher education dealing with academic repression. We quickly found out that academic repression is a more complex issue. It's a lot more complex in many ways than political repression because you have social repression, political repression, uh, state repression, and all of that combined in academic repression. So people, when we define academic repression, we identify academic repression by your political beliefs that you have uh, written, spoke about, or organized around in higher education. That's one uh, point of academic repression. Also, your particular physical identity or invisible identity. Uh, so that's another form, being marginalized or silenced because if you're a person with disabilities, a person of color, a person that is non-traditional uh, student, you know, be it if they're uh, uh, older, uh, 40 or 50, or if they're very young. Another is class issues, uh, and that's another form of academic repression that you just cannot afford getting into higher education. And I think that's so pivotal uh, when we look at what is the foundation of democracy. And when we look at the foundation of democracy, it's based on education, a free educational system for all. And we know how to marginalize people. We saw it through the civil rights movement, we saw it through slavery, we saw it with Pinochet in, in South America. We see it throughout every state uh, institution that if you want to silence somebody, you take away education. And if, if they don't have a form of education uh, or teaching, then that group of, of people uh, become ignorant about politics and, and social change. And I think that's uh, you know, how we looked at academic repression.